Welcome to Moldex 3D. Today we're going to be going over the three main applications which comprise the Moldex 3D software suite. The first application, CAD Doctor, will help us to translate the CAD model from our CAD system to Moldex 3D Designer. Designer will allow us to model our entire system in, including our part, runner system, cooling channels, mold base, and other inserts which can be then imported into our simulation software, which is called Project. Project will allow us to specify our material, our process condition, and ultimately run our simulation and view results. CAD Doctor has a very simplistic workflow. We're going to import our model using the import button here. Then we're going to check in fact, we're going to go through a 16-step uh, checking process, which will identify any and all errors which could affect your meshing and workflow in Designer. Once the check is completed, then you can complete the auto stitch. The auto stitch will only be available if the loops of free edges error has been indicated. In this model, it has not. and is the case for most models. The last step here is going to be auto heal. Auto heal is going to try to fix any of the other errors uh, that are in your model. You can see that there's three different severities. Critical and serious are the ones that we want to get rid of. Minor we don't really care about. So what it's going to do is it's going to heal everything and then it's going to re-execute the check function. And after you get to that point, then you can go and export your model as an MDXSF file. Our next application designer allows us to take that CAD Doctor model and iterate our runner design, cooling system, and other inserts. In this case, I'm gonna use a very simplistic approach. I can use the gate wizard to place a simple gate on my part. So in this case, I can just place a pin gate If I want to, I can add a runner system. All you need is a melt entrance and a key. As far as the cooling system is concerned, we can use the mold base wizard and choose the correct location of the mold base. And then we can use the cooling channel wizard to place a series of cooling channels above and below my part. The four parameters here, D, will change the diameter of my cooling channels and will control the number of cooling channels on the top and bottom. C will control the distance between these cooling channels and H will control the distance of those cooling channels to my part. After adding some inlets and outlets on there, all I have to do is check my cooling channels to make sure that everything is satisfied. And we can see that through this message up here, everything is all good. The meshing in Designer BLM is very simplistic. First, we start with the shell mesh or the surface mesh, which is going to find the boundary of our solid mesh. We're going to start in the node seating. The default mesh size has been optimized based on your part size and based on the components around it. So we can trust this default and click apply. After we click apply, you'll see that the nodes will pop up on your part. These nodes will define the template for the service mesh. In the next screen here, this is our manual node seating where you can manually manipulate the nodes on your part. In most situations, we will keep the default node seating. After node seating, we're going to go into set mesh parameters. And in set mesh parameters, we're going to be defining what the solid mesh looks like. The solid mesh can be defined in one of two ways, either on a geometry type object or a curve type object. 
in this modeling, we have one geometry object, which is the part. So that's our surface model here. And under the curve meshing section, we actually have two attributions which can be considered. We have the gate here, which would be considered part of the runner system. And then we also have the cooling channels. The runner and cooling channels are going to be defined by a two-dimensional template, which will be extruded along the curve that we've created, which will create a perfectly consistent mesh over the entire length of that line. For this reason, curve meshing is always going to be defined over geometry meshing for the runner system and the cooling channels. As far as the part goes, we're going to define five layers BLM, which means that there's going to be five layers on the top surface of the part, there's going to be five layers on the bottom surface of the part, and then there's going to be one layer of tetrahedral elements through the middle. This creates 11 layers through the thickness, which is going to be our recommendation for any type of meshing in Moldex 3D. The boundary layer offset ratio allows us to control the thickness of the boundary layer section. The boundary layer offset ratio maximum is going to be 3, and we're actually going to set uh, a 3.0 as our boundary layer offset ratio to give us the maximum thickness we can for the boundary layer section. This will give us even layers throughout our solid mesh. All right, I'll press on the green check mark here, go to generate, and I'm going to generate all the way through solid mesh of the part. You'll see that I place this tack. The tack represents a stopping point, so the mesher will actually stop at that, at that section. So we're going to see the surface mesh go through, you see refinement in areas where refinement is necessary, around fillets, around curve objects. And then the solid mesh will generate. The solid mesh generation will be creating the inner portion of the mesh, so you won't see anything change here. However, the solid mesh will be created. I'm going to generate the rest of my mesh. So that'll be my runner, my cooling channel, and my mold base. You'll see those various meshes pop up as they generate. You see the, the runner mesh here connecting to the cavity. You see the node density has changed on my cavity because our mesh has automatically refined it. You see the cooling channels. And then the mold base will follow suit. Once the solid mesh for our mold base has been completed, then we can move on to step five, where we're going to use the save mesh file to simply save where we're actually going to pick up this mesh from the next application project. You'll see that we're saving two files. So we're saving the MFE file, which is the file that we're going to import into project. We're also saving a copy of the MDG file which is the native file for designer. So if you wanted to come back and change any aspect of your modeling, then you can open up that MDG file and you'll be able to modify your mesh. Once your mesh has been completed, then we can move on to the project application. To create a new project, we simply double click to create a new project, just as it says. We can name our project. Select our project location, set a password, and then move on. And select our solver as 3D because we always use 3D mesh. Application type setting will allow us to uh, evaluate different typing processes. An information block, and then we're finished. Remark is just going to be your run name, and then we can move on to Mesh. So in order to get Mesh, we need to go back to Designer, and you can see that the solid Mesh has been created. So I'm just going to go ahead and export this. 
once our mesh has been exported successfully, we can come back into project and import. After we import that mesh, we can move on to select our material. Now there's a couple ways we can import. Uh, we can either create a material for you or you can select the material from our database of over 7,500 materials. So I'm going to skip straight to our database. And our database is going to be organized by polymer type. or sub-polymer type. Manufacturer and grade name. After you do that, then you can close out of the material wizard and move on to the process. Very easy to use. In the process, we can uh, obviously create a new process. Using CAE mode, it's very easy to customize the process to the way that you're actually processing this part in reality. We can use the filling time, injection pressure, VP switchover, packing time. We can profile the packing pressure. We can change our melt and mold temperature. And we can also change some of our cooling settings, including the ambient air temperature, the amount of cooling time that we have, the time between cycles, so from mold open to mold close, and then some of the cooling channel parameters like the temperature, flow rate, or pressure, the type of coolant, and then we get a couple of uh, readouts over here, so the diameter comes from your model or your mesh, and the Reynolds number is calculated based on all these parameters. You can also select your mold metal material. Any inserts listed in your mesh will be listed under here. So our mold metal material, we have our own little database for these. By default, it will always be P20. The default process parameters are generally acceptable, um, but sometimes you would want to fine tune those based on your real processing. Computation parameters will be the same from simulation to simulation, so you don't ever need to change these. Check run data will tell you if you have any problems with your run, and if you don't, then you can go ahead and finish. To launch our analysis, we simply double click on the red running man here, and we set our analysis sequence to transient analysis three, and we just click run now there. Let's transition over to a project that's already been run, so we can see some of the results. In the filling stage, we have some interesting results, such as the melt front time. The melt front time allows us to run an animation to see the general flow progression. I can export this animation using the animation toolbar. A couple other results like temperature. Being that Moldex 3D is a true 3D mesh, all of our results are going to be 3D as well, meaning we can slice open our result to see what's going on in the center. So if I use the clipping tool, I'll be able to get a look at what's going on in the center of my part. So as we can see, that boundary layer mesh allows us to visualize the temperature distribution through the center of our part. The ISO surface tool can help us to evaluate where the hot spots are in our part. So I can increase this until my temperature starts to reduce. And there's a bunch of other interesting results that we can go through in the filling 
parameters, but I would refer over to the GMW document that you would get from a formal training in order to evaluate these results any further. Moving on to warpage, a couple of interesting things we can do in warpage. We can not only look at the color distribution for what this whole displacement will look like, but we can also actually scale the model to fit how we want it to. That button's gonna be done through the set warpage scale. So when I change to a specific scale factor, so I can uh, just enter that here. So if I go five times, you can see that our model does in fact shrink a little bit. And this would be a representation of the number that you would see in the scale times five. It's so just a couple of interesting things that we can do in Moldex 3D. This would be covered in much more detail in informal training. And that will conclude the Moldex 3D software where we went over CAD Doctor as a translator to Designer, which can bring in your entire model to be imported into Project, which will simulate your results, and then ultimately uh, give you an output of what your molded part might look like. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.